Hello, I'm Scott McClements, W2X, and I'm here with Lee Ember, WW2DX, and we are just uh, playing around with some preliminary versions of Power SDR uh, version 0 0.92 tonight and thought that we might just throw a few things on camera just to uh, see how it would turn out and figure out what it is we might exactly want to show later on in some subsequent videos. So right now we have the um, <clears throat> OP pan hardware hooked to the IF output of the K3 and that is um, hooked up to the output actually goes from the K3 to the LP pan into the EMU sound card I have here which is hooked up to my desktop system and furthermore there is a serial cable on the back of the K3 which is hooked to the computer that gives us our uh, linking between um, K3 and the power SDR applications via the changes made in power SDR IF stage. So um, as you can see um, it's not a very active band but there is some activity. Um, the audio that you can hear right now is not hooked up via um, direct line to the camera but you're just listening to the output from the K3 and that's it. Um, we could listen to the output from the power SDR but we don't have the means to do that at this time. So as you can see, we can tune the VFO knob on the uh, on the power SDR. And um, tune in the sideband signals that we see. Um, and it's kind of nice having this high resolution you know, pan adapter where we can see the band. As a matter of fact, in this uh, particular setup, I, I am able to see 192 kilohertz of the band at one time. So in this case, I can see all the way from 3.740 up to beyond 3.920. Um, so we can see we have quite a few signals going on. Um, I can tune the K3, which is hooked to the pan adapter, as we can see. Um, now the Power SDR software is pretty much full featured. Anything that you can do with the regular Power SDR and receive is pretty much available. And by that I mean you have other modes available like waterfall um, mode um, and other. I, I guess that's about the only useful two things here are pan adapter and waterfall the other things. I don't really find much use for They kind of just look like eye candy to me. So anyway, I'll switch back to the pan adapter view. Um, as you can see, like, like as normal, you can zoom in if you want to get a closer view of a signal. Um, in this case, we, we have a little bit of alignment issue, but that's uh, something that's going to be worked out here in the short term. Um, also available, I mean, you have all your set, all your regular settings. Obviously, the preamp doesn't have anything to do with this because the preamp is specific to the flex radio, so this doesn't do anything. The AGC is active. This button BCI rejection is not doesn't do anything useful because that also has to do with the flex hardware. All these um, are are useful, as are these buttons. <coughs> um, and getting to this area. We can also turn on the sub-receiver. Um, again, the blue indicates where we're listening to on the sub-receiver and the green is the main VFO. So VFO B is the sub-receiver, VFO A is the main receiver. Um, we see we can tune and we can be listening to the second frequency. Obviously not a very good demonstration right now because we can only hear the audio coming from the K3. So um, it'll probably be better in a subsequent demo where we pipe the audio straight from the thing and you would hear this receiver in the left ear and this one in the right ear or whatever combination you want to hear once it's adjustable here. Again, this is just a, a function of the Power SDR software. Um, and you can see this thing tracks. Um, you know, so it's, it's real nice to, to you know, have that kind of setup. 
um, up here, signal meter with, you know, you could set average or, you know, instantaneous signal. And you have your normal band switching, like we could switch to the different bands. There's 160, 40. Here's 40 meters here. You can see all the broadcast stations. It's uh, 1.30 a.m. on the East Coast here in New York State. So it's pretty much into the broadcast time here on 40 meters. Um, I'll scroll down to show some sideband signals here. But another feature I'll just demonstrate here is I was tuning with the K3 before. Now I'll do this where I click on here and show that I can tune. I can tune by clicking and dragging the pan adapter display. If I see a signal, I can click it and drag it and move it over. I can also just take my mouse wheel and tune right on the VFO. Or another thing is I could just click with the crosshairs and it will tune right to the frequency. Again, the uh, CW signal isn't heard on the K3 that shows on the pan adapter because there's a slight shift between the two in frequency alignment at this time. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I can really show. Um, might be interesting to show that if we go up to like 10 meters, um, 10 meters is pretty much dead at this time. Um, so we can see that we have a few small spurs. These aren't actual signals, but they're rather spurs. But if the band does open at all, we'd be able to see that, especially probably more so with this uh, waterfall mode, which is probably better at showing uh, weaker signals than, than the pan adapter is. So that also would go for six meters. We could also monitor six meters on the K3. So um, I guess one other thing I could show going around, complete the rest, you've got your modes here. You, if you change the modes, they do switch on the, on the K3. The modes are linked. And if I change modes from the K3, they, they also change. So the connection goes both ways. Um, and let's see, let me just go back to 80 for this particular demo. Um, and as normal with the Power SDR, you could select your filter widths here, you know, which you could automatically see on the pan adapter how much stuff is in your passband. Again, this passband is independent of the K3. Um, this doesn't indicate the bandwidth that the K3 is actually using at this time. It's just the bandwidth that the Power SDR receiver is using at the time, so they're not linked. Um, I think that's about all I can think of the show. Uh, Lee, no, is there anything you can I think add? We could probably talk about um, some future stuff that's on the list. <laughs> uh, that's uh, top secret, Lee. Oh, okay, well, we'll leave that out for now. Then. <laughs> Some really cool stuff, actually. In, in, in other, in other words, I'm not going to say anything that I can't commit to. So. <laughs> but anyway, that's basically it for now. So everything seems to be working good. Cool. Um, oh, let me show the setup menu. Oh yeah. Um, the setup menu. This is uh, actually, I said this is version 092, and it is. But this is, I have a little bit more work I've done to this since then. But um, when you use Power SDR IF stage, um, one of the first things that you're going to do is select Power Power uh, Softrock IF stage here, and then you can go here and you have a little bit of setup to do. So you have to set up. But this is radio um, dependent. So actually, now I see why our frequencies weren't aligned. These um, particular values were for my 940 which is over here. So that's why I had this set up for my 940 and we put Lee's K3 on the bench here. Um, this is a new feature for 9.2 where you can select between uh, Ham Radio Deluxe and in the future LP Bridge. So um, that's basically it. There's a few other things I'm adding to this, to this uh, that, I've, that I've had already added to the sound card menu, including this IQ sample offset correction and the buffer size can be enlarged. Cool guys, we're coming up on our 10 minute limit. We'll, uh, we'll add another video soon, thanks.